Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, I will show you how to employ the guided bombs in the A10 Warthog that we have here in DCS, both the laser guided bombs and the JDAMs, as well as the hybrid GBU-54L JDAM. Uh, these types of bombs are employed in basically the same way and have roughly the same HUD symbology as you'll see, but the laser guided bombs need to be lased, so you need to fire the laser for the bomb to guide to it, um, in order to guide the bomb accurately to the target. Uh, in real life, the GPS-guided JDAMs are slightly less accurate than the laser-guided bombs, but are nonetheless very precise compared to unguided bombs. Uh, additionally, the weather conditions in real life can determine whether or not LGPs can be employed, um, because poor weather, for example, heavy cloud cover, fog, rain, things like that, can sort of disrupt the laser and make it difficult, if not impossible, for the seeker on the laser-guided bomb to see, quote-unquote, the laser. Um, JDAMs don't have this issue because they are guided by GPS, um, but in DCS it's not relevant because lasers can go through clouds easily. One of the other advantages of JDAMs is that you can input target coordinates into different individual JDAMs and drop or ripple multiple bombs at once, and each one of those bombs will guide to its separate uh, target. But of course you have to all of the targets have to be relatively close to one another so that you can drop all the bombs at once and they'll all be in range. Now, before we get going, we have some controls that we need to go through. You're going to need your DMS switches, so your forward, aft, left, and right. You're going to need your TMS switches, forward, left, right, and aft. You will need your nose wheel steering button, your boat switch, uh, the China hat switch, mostly forward and aft, and well that's all it is actually, my bad, just forward and aft, um, coolie switch, left, right, up and down, but mostly you're just going to need right for this case. Uh, you are also going to need your HOTAS slew buttons either as an axis or you can have them as just buttons if you don't have an extra little mini joystick on your HOTAS or something. Uh, you're also going to need your HOTAS master mode button and weapon release. And I'm going to talk through what you're going to need, obviously, all of those controls for in a minute. One thing that's very useful in the A10 is because there are so many controls, you have these knee boards you can open. So you can open it by pressing and holding K, or you do right shift K, and it will hold it open, and your brackets to switch back and forth between pages. But basically, it's kind of like a little cheat sheet. So it tells you what each one of the controls are and what it's going to do depending on what sensor you have set as soy or sensor of interest. So we're going to be focusing on TGP mostly for today for a targeting pod because that's what we're going to be using to guide to find targets and guide our bombs to them. So we'll get right into that. So first thing we want to do here is set our left MFD to the DSMIS page here where we have all of our weapons. Then we want to set our right MFD to our TGP page if it isn't already. Then we want to press the AG button to go to air to ground mode. I'm going to do coolie switch right long to set the TGP as soy. We can use our boat switch forward and aft to set the TGP to IR mode, that's infrared mode, and change the polarity so we have white hot or black hot. Set it to white hot for this. If you do have a steer point that is near the targets, you can do China hat aft long to slew the targeting pod to the steer point, and then we can search for targets. So now on our DSMIS page, we want to select the weapon we're going to do. The first one we're going to employ here is our GBU-12, our 500 pound class laser guided bomb. Then as you can see, it says CCIP here, right where above where it says GBU-12. So to change that to CCRP, the difference between those being CCIP, Continuously Computed Impact Point, that's generally what you're going to be doing for dive bombing with unguided bombs, for example. CCRP, Continuously Computed Release Point, is generally what you're going to do for a straight and level bombing, which is what I generally use for the, or is what you, it is what you use for employing your guided ordnance. So to switch that, we want to, on our DSMIS page, we want to press the button above profile. Right here where it says mode CCIP, press the button next to that, change it to CCRP, press save. You can also change this to ripple and change the fuse to nose or tail or whatever. We're just going to leave those as they are, because that's fine. Press save, press that again back to our DSMIS page. 
Suit the targeting pod to your target. You can do China hat forward short to change the field of view and then DMS forward and aft to zoom in and out respectively. You can leave it in area track. You can see it says that there, but we're going to put it into a point track. So we're going to press control or excuse me, we're going to do TMS forward short and we're going to do TMS forward long to set a speed on that, which is a sensor point of interest. And that's useful so you'll be able to slew all of your sensors. Maybe if you're using Mavericks, you can slew those to that sensor point of interest more easily instead of having to manually find the target again and again. Now, if you do not see, I'll unpause it here. If, oops. if you do not see on the HUD, actually, first thing you need to do, excuse me, I forgot this is master arm on and laser on. Are important because we're going to be firing our laser for our laser guided bombs and obviously master them on so that we can release the bomb. Now, what you will see is you're going to see this vertical line that's our steering cue that indicates you want to just basically line that up with your velocity vector here so that you're flying towards the target. And then here, see our CCRP pipper there. Just want to make sure that's lined up. We'll fly towards the target, and in a little bit, once we get closer to the target we are going to see a solution queue with, with a number that's called the TTRN, which is the time to release numerical. It's just that number in seconds. And that will count down. And once that circle reaches the pipper in the middle here, then the bomb will release if you're pressing the weapon release button. So just keep flying here for a minute. There you go. Three, two, one, press and hold weapon release. Pickle. You can see it dropped, and then you want to press your nose wheel steering button and turn that laser on. You can see that the laser is firing because it will be the letter L will be blinking on your TGP as well as on the left side of your HUD. Zoom out a bit here. Your target somewhere down there. We'll just wait here for our bomb to impact. You can see that countdown on the TGP. There we go, shack. Now, for our JDAMs. So, we have two types of JDAMs on our A10 here today. I should have talked through the weapons that I had before. We had the GBU 12 that was on that pylon. You just saw that drop. These bombs here, the two outermost ones, are GBU-38 500-pound class JDAMs, and they have an airburst fuse fitted to them. You can see that little white kind of ball on the end. The large one on the left is the one we're about to employ, which is the 2,000-pound GBU-31. And the one on the right is the also 500-pound class GBU-54L JDAM. So it does have an INS and GPS guidance system, that can be used as a regular JDAM, but it also, you see that sort of black ball with a little purple thing in it, that's a laser seeker. So you can also use it as a laser guided bomb to get that extra precision if conditions allow. Generally, I take mostly just GB54s because they're just the most practical. Because because you have them, there isn't that much of a reason to carry other ones unless you need GB38s with an airburst fuse, for example. And then I like to carry a big one too, just because it's useful for large groups of targets, which is what we're about to use it for. So, on our DSMIS page, we're going to select our GBU-31. You can see it's already in CCRP mode. Now, the symbology on the HUD is roughly the same. Hi, uh, Editing Whisper. Um, I noticed when I was making this that I made a mistake about talking about the symbology for the JDAMs and the differences between that and the GBU-12, so I'm just going to fix it here in voiceover. So, with the basically the difference between the symbology with the laser guided bombs, the GB12s, things like that, and the all the JDAMs, the GB31s, GB38s, GB54s, uh, it's roughly the same symbology. You'll still get the steering cue and everything, but instead of having that big uh, CCRP pipper that you have in the GB12, the laser guided bomb symbology, and the the TTRN and the solution cue descending down you will have what's called the dlz the dynamic launch zone which is the staple basically on the side of the left side of the hud and you'll have a carrot with the range to the target that will descend through that and then basically once that carrot gets within 
that dynamic launch zone, and then you're in range to the target and you can press and hold the weapon release button to release your weapons. I just realized I was firing the laser the whole time. You can press the nose with again to stop that. You'll see the staple here. That DLZ, the dynamic launch zone. So we're going to press our weapon release button, pickle, you for a minute for a bomb to hit. It's a very vertical dive. Pretty close to the target here though. Shack. Uh, that's all five of those BMPs destroyed. So that pretty much covers it for the basic deployment of the guided bombs with the targeting pod in the A10C Warthog that we have here in DCS. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments. Also, if you would consider leaving a like and subscribing, that would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to consider joining the Discord that I have linked in the description, if you have any further questions or want to fly with myself or Jimbo VR, or if you want to know when our upcoming streams are. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that I will see you in the next video.